The Subaru 15 is one of those cars that's a whole lot better than you expect to be. On paper, it could be viewed as being expensive, slow and inefficient, but it's only when you spend time behind the wheel, that you start to understand the deeper-seated quality of this oddball crossover. Yes, it is another small crossover, like the Toyota CHR, Volvo XC40 and Mazda CX3 it L it computes with, but hold your horses, because Subaru is capable of crossing over rather adeptly properly. Especially if you're testing it a little more sternly than regular trips to Tesco and back. After all, 87% of Subaru's European sales are of SUVs, and it's been building them since the original Outback was launched back in 1995. In fact it sells roughly twice as many four-wheel drive vehicles as Jaguar Land Rover worldwide. The recipe here hasn't changed much over the previous 15, which is a rare sight on our roads. It's still powered by a flat 4 engine feeding not much torque through a stepped CVT permanently to all four wheels. This time around you've got a choice of 1.6 or 2.0 petrols to choose from and no diesel in sight. Naturally we're trying the more powerful version. The styling has been altered, although you'd have to be a confirmed car spotter to make sense of the changes over the old 15. So, it has a sleeker grille new LED headlights and silver accents to highlight the car's off-road sensibilities. In fact, while it might look more revolution than revolution, this is a completely new car from the ground up to make use of the new platform. It's fractionally wider and longer than the old 15 with a bigger boot. But is this Subaru 15 better to drive than the previous version? Oh yes. Significantly better. And we can say that unequivocally because we tested them both back to back, at speed, on a deserted airfield, and then in a muddy quagmire for good measure. The biggest difference is in the on-road handling, and that's down to the new platform. Body roll has been mitigated impressively thanks to a lower center of gravity, lighter, stiffer monocoque and a new stabilizer bar at the rear. The latter point is the most important as it connects directly to the body instead of the subframe as before, thus eradicating most of the excess movement. The 15th steering has been improved too, especially on initial turn-in, due to a far more rigid body structure and a retune of the electrically assisted system software. There's still no real feedback in the traditional sense, but it's sharp and accurate enough to be enjoyable on a set of icy chicanes. Another major improvement we noticed during quick driving the power delivery, or more precisely, the gearbox's response. In our quest for a bit of sideways action, old school Scooby style, a long right-hander showed a stark difference in drivetrain performance between old and new XVs. The former didn't serve up nearly enough torque early enough to trouble the symmetrical all-wheel drive system when we wanted to, whereas the latter offered poke almost immediately, with the associated corrective action required. The result? Sideways on snow, and balanced, neutral sliding otherwise. It's not tail happy in any way, but feels solid and manageable. Some rival cars with hall decks have a tendency to understeer with real commitment, but not here. This less than scientific dynamic test had us thinking this could be one of our favorite CVT transmission setups. And that's because this step transmission does a very good job of impersonating a torque converter auto in most circumstances, as is the fashion with so many CVT equipped cars these days. It's only when you try to push the throttle pedal through the bulkhead that you're subjected to the droning racket our very own Anthony French Constant describes as bovine in its oral pleasures, but at least there's more meaningful accelerative progress available than before. That said, the 2.0-liter we're driving here is incredibly smooth and quiet compared with its more conventional rivals. It's not exactly what you'd call quick though, as the 10 seconds plus amble to 62 miles per hour attests. Don't bother with the 1.6 unless you don't do motorways, because the fuss it makes to hit 70 miles per hour really does beggar belief. Purists might actually miss the lack of classic Subaru warble here, as we did when a WRX SDI drove past, but alas it's been ironed out in the name of refinement with extra engine mounts and a more rigid block. And a good job has been done in honing the 15th's manners. Not only is the cabin nicely hushed at speed but the ride quality is excellent. The chassis team have done a great job, so while it's a fraction firm, every single jolt is absorbed and addressed individually by the passive dampers, so you lose the jiggling sensation all too many adaptive setups exhibit. We pick this over air springs and their incessant choppiness any day. <laughs>